Hey, this is Dan from SoCal Creature. This is a follow-up video on the Colton train wreck. This footage was taken 12 days after the accident and I've got a lot of close-ups of the train damage. And if you stick around till the end of the video, I've got some security cam footage that was taken of the accident. Okay, right here we've got one freight car. Looks like it's still completely loaded with lumber. Looks like uh, maybe these are a bunch of stacks of plywood on here. So I take that back. This isn't plywood. You can see all of these still have labels on them and it's two by six by 116 and five eighths. See, I don't know how clearly you can see that label from here, but it looks like all of these are very, it's all the same thing. When I came here the day after the accident, this freight car was not sitting here. They've moved this up here to get it out of the way. You can see they've got it anchored down to the rails there. Uh, this car looks pretty good condition, but I'll show you up at the other end. So up here at the other end of this car, you can see there's a little bit of damage on the front end. Not too bad compared to some of the other freight cars down there. You can see, I showed you on the back of this, they've got it anchored down with chains to the uh, rails. And then up here, they've got these wheel chocks on it, blocking it. And then in the direction of the rest of the accident, you can see they've got some flags. And there's a little, I don't know if you can read that from here, there's a little uh, block on the rail. So it's got a little derail flag. And then if you go down a little bit further, that track just ends. Down there, about another 600 feet, you can see where the rest of the cars are. I was out here the day after the accident and there was workers everywhere. I popped by yesterday and um, still a bunch of guys out here working, but I didn't have time to make a video. So I came back today, today's Saturday, and I don't see anybody working over there. But I did see when I was driving in, I think I saw the truck for the security guard. Is that directed personally towards me? I don't know. And you can see off to the right, there's another freight car down there. This side's still loaded up with lumber. Pretty sure the other side of that has been emptied out. And then you can see down here, they've moved a couple of the cars right out over the sidewalk next to the street. Those trains were awfully close to these houses. It's very fortunate nobody got hurt. So here's another view you can see. This is the neighborhood. But to give you an idea how close this was to the homes, you got the cars right there. They came down, they were right around that tree. And then you've got this home right here, basketball court. There's a kid's scooter there, kid's bike right over there. Very close to this house. Just look at the damage on the front end of this thing. This thing is just ripped open. So when I was here the day after the accident, you could see these, these freight cars were back there piled up. But since then they've moved these forward and they've picked them clean of all the lumber that's on them. So this train coming through here now was headed south into the Colton Diamond and then hanging a right to go west towards LA. And then right over there you can see another freight train going north through the Colton Diamond, passing underneath the 10 freeway. And you can see this is a very busy train in intersection. This is supposed to be one of the most congested train intersections in the country. Okay, so you can see the back side of that train car. There's one quarter of the train that's been unloaded and it looks like that's where the most damage was. You can see the floor below it is pushed up. So you can see through here all of this heavy equipment that they brought in for the cleanup crews. It's all just sitting here today. There's no work going on here today. It's Saturday, April 2nd. The only person I see working is uh, that security guard over there. He's keeping an eye on me. Again, this one's, it's all been picked clean. These were all loaded up with lumber earlier. But you can see the damage down here on the front end. This one's pretty torn up. And then you can see that back one back there, just a skeleton. That whole frame on that thing looks a little bit tweaked. So over here, this is one of the open top freight cars. This thing's still full of lumber. I goofed a little bit. When I was standing next to that freight car, I thought it was an open top container, but no, it was, <laughs> it's flipped over on its side. I can see that now that I'm at the end. This is the underside of that car. This is the closed container with the doors on the side. See underneath that thing's just mangled. They still got the wheels down there. But from what I can see in those doors, it's been completely cleared out also. Yeah, nothing in this car. See the front's pretty mangled here. So this is engine 1599 here. This one looks like it fared a little bit better than the other one. But uh, again, I don't know a lot about this and 
I don't know how salvageable these things are, or is these things are just going to be scrapped. I don't know. If you have any ideas, let me know in the comments. I don't know about that damage underneath, what you can do about that. You can see there's a broken window up there in the cabin. So that's interesting. There's a sign on here that says, Warning, Remote Control Locomotive. I wonder if these things were running on remote when this all happened. You can kind of see up there a little bit. There's the engineer's chair, which I guess they don't need if it's remote control. Here's the other side of 1599. All right, here's the 1703. I'm gonna walk around this guy. Warning, remote control locomotive. You can see the wheels down here just dug into the ground. Look at the size of that tank. Remote control locomotive. So yeah, this side still looks in pretty good condition too. So here you can see a close up of engine number 1554. I'm gonna show you some of the damage on the side of this thing. Now, if you watched my previous video, I'm pretty sure that this is the one that I said looked like a parallelogram. Let's see if I can get a picture of it from the front. But you can see how this thing's just ripped open on this whole side here. This doesn't look like something that's going to be salvageable. It's interesting to see the engine inside there. This is 1554, you can see the ends mangled up here. Hopefully you see this better when I step into the shade. There's the front end, the back end, back end I guess. <laughs> Pretty mangled, let me get in the shade here, you should be able to see better. Now you can see that engine just pushed through. Ownership subject to a security agreement filed with the Surface Transportation Board. Okay, and then here on the third engine, also remote control locomotive. This thing, just all of its guts hanging out right here. Not in good shape. All the doors along the side of this thing, all tweaked, bent out of shape. See that another busted window in the engineer compartment on this? If there even was one, it does say remote control. I just gotta wonder if this whole thing was just on a remote control the whole time. If you have any idea how common that is to have these trains running on remote control, leave a comment, let me know. So yeah, this one right here in front, 1554, is the one that I was looking at the other day. It said it looked like a parallelogram, you can see the back, the front looks pretty square, but the farther you go towards the back, you can see it's just leaning over. Here comes another train. There is a lot going on at this junction right here. It's called the Colton Diamond. Very busy. There's another pile of wheels. Now, you saw my first video. Actually, I'll show you right here real quick. You can see them from here. There's wheels everywhere. Wheels and axles all over the place. You can see there's a bunch of them down there. I got some footage of that last time, but it looks like there's a lot more there than there was on the first day. I'll head down there and get some footage in a minute. So here's two cars. One's upright and the other one's tilted over on its side. Just mangled. Okay, so this is the one, if you look at my other video, there was an end that was just ripped off. It's got to be this car right here. So yeah, the other day I found that ripped off end. I couldn't tell where it came from, but now that they're not working here and I can get up a little closer, I'll show you where the where the end of that one is in case you haven't seen that video. But either way, I'll have a link to it at the end of this video. If you like this content, make sure to hit like and subscribe. Here is that end. 
it's kind of a little buried now compared to the other day. So this end that's ripped off is the other end of that train car right there. So here's just a ton of debris that they've pulled out. Look at all these axles and wheels. And then here's a whole stack of, I don't even know what these are. They're plastic, whatever it is. Look at all those axles and wheels. Oh, and here we got some kind of a signal taken out. Looks like. Maybe it's not a signal, I'm not sure what that is. It's got a ladder on it though. Just more debris. These guys, I don't even know what these are called. Then you got another train car over there with the doors on it. I don't know what's in that one. I think it's closed. It looked like it was closed from both sides. And then look at this door here. Looks like someone kicked it in. I'm gonna, it looks like I can peek in there and see what's inside it. Looks like some kind of a cardboard drum or something. And then you've got this airbag right here. Packing list enclosed. Here you got a pile of damaged rails. Look at that guy I just cracked off right there. See that one looks like a banana. B-A-N-A-N-A-S. Here's some of the stacks of the new rails that they were bringing in. When I was here the day after, there were several truckloads came in dropping these guys off and then forking them over there. So I think the that first day, the focus of their work was just clearing the tracks and getting them running again. And they were just taking all of this stuff and setting it to the side. Now it's uh, 12 days later, you can see it's a lot more organized. A lot of stuff has been cleaned out. So I noticed a couple of these signs out here. That's not a good thing to have underneath a, a train rack, a petroleum line. I'm not sure exactly where it's at, but I saw, I'll get some more footage. Uh, when I was up there by that first train up on, by the rail, I saw another one of these signs. Before excavating or in emergency, call collect. It's a 714 area code.